The first time someone referred to me as homeless, I could feel the blood drain from my heart. I am a survivor. When my advocate said that I had to relocate and that I would relocate into a safe house, I, I knew that. Um, I didn't have much time to process it because I had to get someplace safe. What I didn't realize is what would happen after the fact. I knew I came down here with $30. I know that I used 10 of it to get from the station to the police station. Um, I came into Atlanta and had to hop on MARTA and I took that to a train stop. And from there, I jumped into one of the cabs and took it to the local precinct because the police officer was gonna drive me to the safe house. And I had to use $10 of the $30 that I had to my name in order to do so. And I got to the safe house and didn't really even know where my life was going to go or how things were going to work out because this was new to me and no one told me. And I had to get on assistance. And so I had to go down to welfare, which they call DFACS in Atlanta, Department of Family and Children's Services. And when a woman asked questions and she wanted to know where I lived, and I remember I said, well, I can't give you the address to where I live because it's a safe house, but I can give you an address to their main office, to the agency. And she was just like, well, you know, that's not your home, you're homeless. And it, I had a hard time processing that because my whole life, whenever I heard the term homeless, it was somebody sleeping outside on the street, you know? And I was like, no, 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 you're confused. I'm, I'm not homeless. Um, I'm staying at the safe house. And the woman was like, no, you're confused. You're homeless. And my self-esteem was already low. It just like crumbled down to the floor. Like, I was just like, where am I and how did I get here? How did I get to a point where now I was homeless with a newborn in a city so far away from home with nothing? And I remember the workers there, and many of them were so nasty and so mean. And I remember the lady telling me, you know, it's not our job to feed you and your baby, you know, because um, I was requesting emergency food stamps. She's like, well, you know, at the shelter that you at, I'm sure they have food. So just eat what they got there and you can just wait till you get your stamps. And I was just like, um, okay, but not everything that they eat there, I can eat because I'm nursing and I have a certain diet. And she's like, well, you don't have any choice to be picky. You know, like beggars can't be choosers, you know, just nasty, nasty, nasty for no reason. And... What they didn't tell me is that since I had a little baby and he was so small that I could get exempt from their TANF program, um, which is like their work program. And you go there to build job skills and to learn how to write a resume and how to search for employment. And those wasn't skills that I necessarily needed because, you know, I had a bachelor's degree. I had work experience, tons of it, actually. I had a really strong resume. Um, so they just put me in a system like they looped everyone. Whether you were educated or you were not educated, you just got looped into it. And they didn't tell me that I had got exempted for this program. So I was getting up every morning, having to travel on MARTA. I had to take two buses. Um, I had to walk to my son's daycare and then walk to the bus and I mean I'm walking and this is winter in Atlanta it does get cold in the winter time and I'm walking through areas that's not really pedestrian friendly like basically walking through woods and stuff to get to where I need and it was quite dangerous um, but the whole time I was just saying to myself like God if anything happens please let somebody find my baby and let him be okay you know please you know as cars is zipping past me in the evening because at, at night in the winter it gets really dark cars can't see me until they drive past and the light hits me because some places didn't even have street lights i mean 
just wasn't really pedestrian friendly. Um, but no one told me and my son actually got really sick. He developed RSV and I think it was a combination of us walking and being cold and it him being a preemie and being exposed to these different elements and even the daycare that he was at initially it wasn't the best place it, had, it was very drafty I remember like saying like it just seemed drafty even in the infant's room and I had an incident where his breathing had gotten so bad I mean it was so heavy and he could barely breathe and I remember telling him I was like look I need to get him to the emergency room the staff at the safe house like I need to get him to the emergency room and I don't have a vehicle like they's like well you can't call a, ca a cab you know because nobody's supposed to know where the safe house is and then finally I was just like look if my baby died this is really going to look badly on you guys and don't forget my advocate calls down here almost every other day or every day to check on me you know I'm gonna let her know that y'all wouldn't let me go to the hospital so they did allow one of the young ladies in the safe house that had a car to drive me to the hospital to get my son the meds that he needed and he needed to be put on steroids and um treated because he was not really doing um that well but I noticed that the way people treated me um when they found out that I was homeless was like I was dirt and I wasn't anything and I didn't matter or like I was nothing even if they had that history and that background that I was domestic violence if even if they knew that I was staying in a safe house for them that stigma of being homeless or being poor or being on public assistance meant that you was non-existent and you didn't have real rights and you didn't matter and I'm not going to say everyone in the world treated me like that because there was some people who were like true angels. Oh my God. I can tell you some situations I've been in. Oh my gosh. I've been in some of the worst situations. And at the same time, I've met people that I tell you, they really must have been angels that came down to earth because I would meet people and I'm just like who are you and just I'll say for every five horrible people that are out there in this world there are one or two extremely exceptional people with really pure hearts that are so good that will just <laughs> they will just They just get rid of the negativity. So um, when I see other people out there struggling, I never go, that can't be me. You know, I don't have that ideal. I don't treat them like they're nothing. Um, because at any time, any one of us could lose everything and we don't know where we could end up. And I was a prime example of that. I was a college graduate, had a great job and met a man and within a year my whole entire life changed so drastically that I became a homeless single mom on public assistance.